How's it going guys? We have a medium difficulty question for micro for step one, as well as family medicine for 2CK. You should be aware of this diagnosis. I believe I've actually made, I probably made the same fucking clip earlier on my audio cue bank here, but it just illustrates uh, the point of yieldness. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like, I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical. I'm the man underscore medical links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to Telegram group and channel down below. And I'll start the clip. So nine month old girl. Today history, low grade fever, mild wheezing. Physical exam shows bilateral wheezes on auscultation. She's febrile at 101 Fahrenheit. Question wants to know the most likely explanation for findings. Let's just whip through the answer choices here. Choice A, DNA virus, wrong fucking answer. I mean, look, we could spend 46 minutes talk about every fucking organism. Uh, I could briefly mention that uh, a high-yield DNA virus for U.S. simile, particularly PEDS, would be adenovirus, okay, which is the most common cause of viral conjunctivitis. Absolutely can be adults, but pediatrics, viral conjunctivitis, daycare centers, uh, adenovirus can also cause hemorrhagic cystitis, okay, so blood in the urine. Pox virus, high-yield DNA virus, okay, molluscum contagiosum, a peach or reddish-colored uh, umbilicated papules after going to a pool party in particular, uh, hepatitis B, the herpes viridae, a lot we can discuss. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, gram-negative bacterium, wrong answer. So once again, a myriad of organisms could spend a half an hour, okay, right now, but a high yield differential, which is not the case here clearly, but you could be aware of epiglottitis, which is Haemophilus influenza type B classically. Okay, we vaccinate against it, but if they said unvaccinated or immigrant status, uh, then we'd have to think gram negative bacterium, uh, Haemophilus influenza type B. And also, of course, splenectomy patients increase risk against that or for that. Uh, so uh, that could be drooling, tripod position. It's a medical emergency. You need to intubate. Uh, and you give ceftraxone to treat, sometimes a pediatric cefotaxime, and you need to know that uh, you can see a thumbprint sign on x-ray of the neck. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, gram-positive bacterium, wrong answer. Actually, quickly, I will be an asshole. Uh, pertussis is also technically a gram-negative. That's not the case here, but could be a differential. There's no cough, but... They like throwing that in there as well, pertussis gram negative, but uh, they could say in an adult, they like giving you, they'll give you a 21 year old who had post tussive emesis. Okay, so they don't have to give you whooping type cough. They can just say 21 year olds had a cough and they'll say he's had vomiting after the cough. That's, that uh, is indicative sometimes of pertussis and uh, hypoglycemia you can see in pertussis. As I just said, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, gram positive bacterium, wrong answer. So a myriad we could talk about, I could mention scarlet fever, okay, strep pyogenes, uh, beta hemolytic, okay, so a clear zone of hemolysis on blood agar, um, and scarlet fever is going to be strawberry tongue, okay, red tongue, you get a salmon pink body rash, or a sandpaper-like rash, you treat with penicillin because strep pyogenes, of course, can go on to cause rheumatic heart disease, rheumatic fever, uh, penicillin won't prevent PSGN in that setting. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, Helminth, wrong answer. If we wanted to entertain something really to pulmonary, it could be the nematodes, strongyloides, stercoralis, as well as the uh, hookworms, actually. Okay. No, I shouldn't go into the hookworms, but uh, strongyloides, stercoralis, you get through your feet. Okay. There's a question where the NVMEs, they say a girl has been running around barefoot in uh, rural Louisiana. She has high eosinophils. Okay. And she had some pulmonary findings. She had some wheezing. And the answer was, they wanted to know how she contracted it. And the answer was through her feet. Okay. So you get strongyloides through your feet, as well as the hookworms through your feet. And it goes to your lungs. And then somehow you swallow it. And then it ends up in your GI tract the way hookworms cause microcytic anemia. Okay. They give you low hemoglobin. Wrong fucking answer. Choice the RNA virus, correct answer. So this is RSV bronchiolitis, okay, respiratory syncytial virus. It's going to be the most common cause of pulmonary infection in a kid under the age of 18 months. So they'll give you classically like 10-month-old, okay, 12-month-old, and they'll say there's just bilateral wheezes, low-grade fever, and the answer can just be community-acquired viral infection. Okay, I've literally, there's a question on one of the family medicine forms, I believe it is, where they give you like A through J, they give you a shitload of answers. And I have students choosing like toxin-induced 
vasospasm, weird fucking answers. And it's like, bro, it's just fucking community acquired viral infection. Okay, RSV, it's going to be supportive care. Uh, obviously, high yield differentials. We just mentioned epiglottitis before for Hib, Hemophilus Woods type B. You could also be aware of para influenza virus, RNA virus. So, paramyxoviridae, viridae means family. So, we've got para influenza virus, which, which is AKA paramyxovirus, RSV, mumps, measles. Okay, a lot we can talk about. Uh, of course, croup, uh, para influenza virus, can be seal like bark and cough, classically, or horse cough that gets, uh, that gets better. It improves when the child is brought out in the cold. Okay, but this is RSV bronchiolitis, ultra high yield. Okay, so the diagnosis is past level. But this question, of course, because we decided to uh, increase difficulty with the uh, categorization of the organism. Okay, a bit medium difficulty here. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.